What's in the box? What's in the box? Repeat, John Doe has the upper hand. What's going on guys? It has been quite some time since I've made it. What's in the box video because I haven't been ordering parts because we've been in season. Guess what? Now we're not in season and we're ordering stuff because why? Because we're building a new pro to Today, in What's in the Box, we're going over our new partner for the 2020 Pro 2 season. Tilton Engineering. Tilton, if you notice, the colors are that of the Dotson. Bam! The Dotson stripes. Pretty sick. They've been around for a long, long time. We hit up Tilton. Tilton won, or we actually hit up CBM. CBM sent us up with Tilton and put in a good word for us. And Tilton's willing to partner up with us and help us out for the 2020 season in Pro 2. And this is good news because now we get to run some pretty legit products on the car. This is actually pretty cool because I was looking into these and we have these at work. And the one we have at work is kind of a little too much for what I'm trying to do. And then after looking through some Osmo or uh, Papadakis Racing videos, we were able to find out that Osmo also runs this setup in his car, and so we were like, that's the one we want in. If one of the champions is running it, that's what we want to run, we want to run good parts, and that's what Tilton does. What I have for you today is the 600 series pedal box assembly, and it's still all like loose because I haven't tightened it up, but I think this is gonna be roughly the settings we're gonna put it in. It has a brake bias adjuster, so the FD rules talk about you can't have one master that controls the front brakes and the back brakes. You need to have one master that has two outputs on it, one for the front and rear, or you can run one master for the front brakes and one for the rear. And so what this will allow us to do is via um, this remote, actually I should grab it real quick because it's a part of this assembly. So, it is, it's chosen by winners, winners since 1972. So with this little guy here, this is gonna be a brake bias adjuster. And no, you loser Android and take this from work. We have these also at work and uh, actually I gotta like relocate it. But what this allows you to do is this cable here will go and get locked into the brake bias adjuster, the bar there. And when you spin this knob, it's locked in and it'll adjust the brakes from left to right, which would allow it to go from front to rear. So the amount of twist you would put into this bar, it would rebalance the, um, the way that the uh, masters get compressed. So you can kind of see they're a little bit off. And then if you were to screw it in and set it the other way and apply it, then it would balance them out a little bit more. And so this all changes obviously when it has pressure. You can see it a lot more when you do that. But we'll be able to now adjust the car and fine tune the brakes to where we're having a little bit more lock up in the front, a little less lock up in the front, a little more in the rear, a little less in the rear. On top of that, this pedal assembly comes with the clutch pedal here. Really nice grip tape pedals, which I actually have in the uh, Hail Mary. The Hail Mary has grip tape on the pedals because I've always liked the feeling of it and the bottom of the racing shoes are pretty slick, so they grab these really, really well. And so this is gonna be just a nice solid addition to the program and to the car. We've got a three quarters for the clutch there, uh, master cylinder, and then we have a three quarters for the rear and then a five eighths for the front. And this is all stuff that you can get spec'd out from Tilton. Now this is pedal assemblies is actually surprisingly pretty cheap for just the assembly. You're looking at around $280, I believe. And then each master, I believe is like a uh, hundred and twenty, I think, or something like that. So you can probably get out of the shop with this setup right here for somewhere around $600, I believe. I don't know the math. Point is, is that you can get out with this and install this in your car. And kind of the benefits to what this does is that obviously it allows you to adjust your brake bias from front to rear, but on top of that, because this is an overhung assembly, meaning that the masters hang over your feet and the pedals hang down, now in the engine bay side of the car, there's not gonna be a master and a brake booster and all this stuff hanging out in there, so the engine bay can be a lot simpler and easier to work on, along with pulling the cylinder head that is on the driver's side of the car, because we had an issue where if you have studs, the ARP studs, or um, not even just studs, we just wanted to pull the head off, and when you're trying to pull the head off of the LS, it runs into the brake master and then the uh, E46 chassis. And so, now having this, we should be able to service the driver's side of the, of the motor, just like the passenger side of the motor, and clean up the engine bay a lot, and not have to have any like weird stuff hanging in there. On top of that, did I mention the Frederick Oswald runs this stuff? Pretty legit. That's the pedal assembly. It's pretty freaking dope. I'm really, really excited to throw this in the car. The quality on this stuff is awesome. Jet nuts and dope stuff like that. And then this is the brake bias adjuster, so now we can mount 
mount this in a location where I can reach it and I can physically just turn the knob and adjust the brakes to how I want them to be depending on how the car feels. There it is. And this is the cable that sticks out and goes into the uh, braking bar or the uh, bias bar. So that's pretty sick. This thing's gonna help out a lot. We should be able to get a little bit more feel from our pedals and not have to worry about running out of brake boost and things like that um, when you're trying to do like left foot braking things and, and burnouts. Think about the burnouts, dude. We can dial this thing to full front, no rear. Send fatty burnouts. So that's that, that's what's in that box. We got a little bit more for you. Also, I forgot to mention, Brake Master Reservoir. Pretty sweet. It's got the front brake, it's labeled with an F. It has the rear brakes labeled here with an R and the C for the clutch. So this will get mounted. Either you can mount this in the engine compartment or you can mount this on the passenger side or just above the brake pedal box. There's different spots you can put it, but it's remote, so that's pretty rad. It's got these two uh, holes here, so what you could do, what we do at work is we run two uh, M6 mil bolts out the back and then we get these things called bar clamps, which we put on the SLR kit to stop the uh, condor bushings from walking out because of the difference in their two products. Uh, a bar clamp and you should Shave one side of the bar clamp flat, drill a hole, tap it with an M6 M6 1.0, and then with that you're allowed to throw bolts and screw it straight into the bar clamp and this will be nice and sturdy on the uh, dash bar. So pretty rad. That's going to help out too and keep things real nice, clean, and organized. So this versus your factory BMW reservoir, this is a lot nicer. Very, very compact and fine and organized. So I like that a lot. Now the next thing that we have, which I am pretty excited about, if you can read upside down, is the race clutch. Now this is the 7.25 inch four plate clutch. This thing is rad. I was kind of worried because the thing with clutches for me is that the way that the system works and the way that, well really just the way that the system works is that the pressure plate kind of does most of the work. The disc is just kind of there as, it's just a pad, right? That, that allows the pressure plate and the flywheel to stick to each other. The clutch disc is, you can kind of get a mediocre one, but the pressure plate is where where I spend a lot of my money. I spend a lot of money in the pressure plate side of things. So the pressure plate really is the, it's the clamping force of the clutch system. And so if your pressure plate's weak, your clutch is gonna slip. Or if your disc is just worn down too bad or it's glazed over or your flywheel's messed up, that stuff can all come from having either poor driving abilities or a pressure plate that's just not good and it's not clamping down. And so if you guys are out there spending money on stuff, you should really focus on your pressure plate or just get this tilt-in kit and you don't have to worry about it. Why don't you have to worry about it? Because Osbo runs it in his thousand horsepower car. It's a four plate clutch system with pressure plate built in. It's pretty freaking magnificent. This does not come with it. This is the $5 tool from AutoZone. It's just a uh, clutch alignment tool so that you can line that up. I'll kind of break this down for you real quick so you can see what we're working with here. So you have a, a clutch disc, you have a plate, you have another clutch disc, and then you have a plate, and then you have another clutch disc and a plate. And then you have another clutch disc and a plate. This slides out of there. Bam. And then you have your pressure plate. So this thing's pretty bad. It's all built here in the US as it says. This is a GM setup for the LS. I believe it's a 20... I forgot what the tooth count is on the input shaft. It's the same input shaft as the T56 that comes on the LS, and you can get your dog box built from G-Force as well with the same input shaft. Kind of the benefits to running this is really the amount of clamping force that it has, and then the amount of stress that it distributes over all of these pieces versus having the one setup. Again, our biggest reason for going with this, Tilton obviously being an amazing company that makes some very, very high quality stuff, but also seeing it in Osmo's car and understanding that championships are made off of really good, reliable parts and good driving obviously but if there's anybody you want to mimic it's gonna be the top dogs and so that's what we're going for and Tilton again working with us this season and giving us a huge help these companies know what they're doing they've been doing it for a long time and you really should not be trying to reinvent their wheel because they've pretty much got it all figured out this is not the way you use the clutch alignment tool this is just so that everything stays together there you have it the clutch alignment tool will go in from this side quote unquote input shaft like portion of the clutch alignment tool will go into your pilot bearing. So it just completely flips around. I can actually just throw it that way for you. But it'll go like this. You'll throw your flywheel up on the motor and then you'll push the input shaft in and then you'll throw your bolts in and tighten down your pressure plate and it'll start to clamp all these plates in. Yeah, and then you're ready to throw your bell housing and your release bearing on there. But anyways, this thing is monstrophic. It's like a stack of pancakes, super bomb. Seven 
and a quarter inch disc. Very, very, very small, lightweight, compact, and it's gonna distribute again the load over four different discs versus it just being on one. And then the clamping force is obviously good enough to run a thousand horsepower because Osmo does it. This is what we're gonna run on our car and it's gonna be a good time. And then the cool thing about the Stilton stuff too is that it, they send you all the hardware. And all this hardware is like, they're all um, NAS bolts. Super, super legit hardware. Really, really like that. And then this doesn't have any nuts or anything like that. The pressure plate will actually mount using these bolts going through the pressure plate into the flywheel. And with the flywheel being said, I have some more stuff. All right, so a couple more packages that we got here from the guys over at Tilton. This one being uh, secondary to this here. Now this is a Tilton flywheel. This flywheel is pretty legit. Oof, you like that? It's a sick cut right there. It's all oiled up in grease, so I'm not gonna take it out of the package because I'll probably get yelled at. It's got the uh, oil on it to stop any kind of like rusting, but this is a six bolt flywheel. It's extremely, extremely thin and very, very, very lightweight. And then the pressure plate it actually has the holes already drilled in it so that the pressure plate, the bolts can come through and tighten the pressure plate down to this flywheel here. This thing's gonna be real legit. And then the surface for the clutch disc is right here. Very, very, very small. So everything's really tiny, real small, compact, a lot of clamping force, but this will allow you to really just the smaller mass is gonna be really easy to start and stop and drifting. If you guys watch any kind of like undercar videos, you can literally see everything stopped when they pull the handbrake and then the clutch gets released and everything has to start spinning again. So minimizing that weight that you'll have in there will be really good for getting the car to screen back up, especially for you guys like racing or lowered horsepower motors. This stuff will help out a lot in, in your like throttle response and the, the way that your motor comes back into the power, spinning a lot less stress on the uh, powertrain. What we have here, is a super starter high torque mini starter. This is from Tilton and this pairs up with their flywheel because their flywheel is a little smaller than the normal one. And it actually locates in the stock factory starter points, but this gear is a lot sh is shot over closer because the flywheel is a smaller diameter. Really excited to run this. It's a high torque, high stress starter. We never really had any issues with our other stuff, but because we're running their flywheel, we need to run their starter. I'm really excited about this. Again, this stuff all comes with like the mounting hardware, shims and all kinds of goodness. They even send you like a dyno sheet of the starter. They send you a, a test sheet too that it's all set up and ready to go. It's got all the numbers on there. So it's been tested and everything and it's ready to go straight into your car. <laughs> These are probably my favorite part of the entire kit because I had so many issues with this particular part. I think I'm really excited about the way that this operates because of the light weight of it. Now you can't really tell, but in this box is something you wouldn't think is in this box. Cause I was like, yo, they forgot to send me the part. They did it. This is the hydraulic release bearing. Super, super compact, legit, tiny, small, no issues. This thing is bad because it's got a four bolt setup. On my last one, I actually, if you guys remember, I have just a little bearing that slides onto the shaft of the, uh, the dog box. And it just has a little fork that sticks off the side and the fork slides on a pin that's screwed into the front of the dog box. But with this case, you'll have the four bolts and it'll mount this to the bell housing. Along with when the other one with the uh, fork on it, when I would slide the transmission out, I'd have to pull it back off of the bell housing about an inch or inch and a half. The release bearing would stay with the transmission and you'd have to stick a screwdriver in there and kind of just work it and walk it off of the input shaft in hopes that you wouldn't like split it and break the seals and stuff. So it's kind of a task to pull the transmission out without messing up the hydraulic release bearing in the old setup. But with now this setup being mounted to bell housing, we shouldn't have any issues. Let me kind of show you what's in this box. If you guess bell housing, you're right. Because this is the aluminum tilted bell housing super freaking light it's kind of crazy how light this is compared to the steel ones that we use now you may have seen some wobble there and it's not because it's not cut flat but it's the portion that is mounting on the motor is flat and then there's a drop on the inside i'll show it to you you can kind of see how this portion here will be mounting on the back of the motor and then the rest of this is nice and recessed. You can throw on the plates and the guards and stuff to uh, guard your flywheel. I think the thing that I'm probably the most excited about is the way that they set this throwout bearing up in here is just absolutely amazing. So you can see it has these these uh, nubs here, these notches cut out of them, and they're machined so well. And this is cut in kind of like a weird pattern. You can see the four pickup points. It's machined so well, this piece just kind of locks right in there. It's already like locked in without having to throw bolts into it. 
This is like top notch quality stuff along with the holes for the feed line and the bleed line. And then you have the ports here that'll get your dash three fittings that actually came in here. So again, your hardware is here and the mounting hardware for this is in another bag as well. The four bolts to mount it and then these are your adapters that screw into the tilted release bearing. Oh, they actually it didn't even fall out. Anyways, these will screw into the release bearing and then on this end is a dash three AN line and you'll run dash three lines into here and then you can run a bleeder straight off the bottom or what I like to do is run a bleeder back up to the firewall so we can actually work on it without getting the car in the air and bleed the system. And then this line here will come in and, and go into the pedal assembly and we'll run a stainless steel braided line into that section too. So this is gonna be a lot easier. This is what I was talking about when you pull the transmission out. The release bearing won't physically stay with the transmission the transmission should just slide straight out the back and this will all stay intact and input. So it's pretty rad. And then if you want to undo the bolts, you can undo the bolts and you can undo the lines and fish this thing out without having to pull the bell housing out. So it should be pretty, pretty sweet to work on and the way that it's going to operate, I'm just excited. You can see the four bolts that are threaded for the bell housing and then, or for the uh, transmission. The four bolts that are threaded for the dog box are in there as well. And then we have these mounting tabs if you wanted to do a plate on the back and mount these to the chassis. You might end up cutting these off because they might just be in the way for us. We might not need them. We don't really know yet. We'll see what happens. This hole here is a dowel pin and this hole here is a is a dowel pin as well or an alignment pin or whatever you guys call it. All these will get picked up on the LS. Pretty legit. This thing is going to be super exciting and very, very simple to work on and very, very easy to to work with in getting the system bled and all that stuff. So I'm extremely thankful for Tilton being willing to work with us for the Pro 2 season and believing in us. And I cannot wait to start putting this stuff together. I'll put it together and I'll show you guys how I put it together as well. So if you wanna follow along with me in more videos, you can see that stuff. We're gonna be documenting the Pro 2 build as much as we can. Time is very, very short. Having somebody film while we're working on the car isn't always an option, so we'll have to film. Stopping from what I'm doing to film something just kind of exceed, like just makes the process a million times longer. So I'll try to film as much as we can. Currently at this point, the car already has the body and stuff already all chopped up and all that. We're already getting started into like the roll cage process of the new chassis. Tag along, I'll be sharing a lot with you guys on kind of the things we do and the ways to work on this stuff or that we work on it. It should be a good time. I'm excited for this stuff. Huge shout out to Tilton. Go follow them on Instagram. And if you see anything on there you like, go get it. Pretty cool, I ordered this stuff on Thursday and I got it on Friday because I'm not too far from them in California, but they were on it. They got it shipped out and got it to me as fast as they can. Thank you, Tilton. Welcome to the team. Let's see what we can do in the Pro 2 season. Hopefully we can uh, get another championship. Let's go. Gotta get to work.